Hello and welcome to Bombay Spine Society uh, case of the month. Today we have with us our dear friend Dr. Priyank Patel, who is going to show us an interesting case of spinal metastasis. So on to you, Priyank. Thank you, thank you, Manish, and thank you, Bombay Spine Society, for this uh, opportunity. So uh, this is a this is a young lady, a forty-three year old female who presented to us with neck pain, stiffness, and uh, paresthesias in the right uh, upper limb. Now, on examination, she had severe restriction in the range of motion. She had a fixed kyphotic neck. Uh, there were no long track sign. There were no deficits on examination. Now, this lady had a history of thyroid cancer, which had metastasized to the cervical spine uh, around seven eight years back in two thousand fourteen. And the sacrum. At that time, a thyroidectomy was done. Along with that, a posterior cervical debulking was done because she had compression of the C5-6 root. Um, along with that, patient was subjected to radioiodine therapy. The important part about the previous history was that the patient had a right vertebral artery injury during the primary surgery. So now, when she presented to us, this was the MRI picture. So if you look through the series, what you'll notice. that she had multiple skip metastases in the cervical spine uh, there were there were lesions in the c5 body and c7 body uh, also what you'll notice is that there's hardly any central cord compression almost all the compression or almost the tumor was involving the body and the right sided lateral mass area uh, she had certain congenital anomalies of the vertebrae which i uh, got through her previous mris and she had block vertebra with a syrinx which has been same all throughout uh, a ct scan showed that she had uh, osteolytic lesion but there was a, a firm bone formation in the posterior aspect so i guess during the primary surgery some bone graft must have been put which has eventually uh, fused and caused a sturdy spine so we did a flexion extension x ray which proved that she did not have any instability at this area so with this we had to decide how to proceed with this patient now she the important things to note was that she was a young female with recurrent spinal metastasis the mri was looking very bad but clinically the patient was not that bad there was hardly any instability previously the patient had a right vertebral artery injury uh, so she was kind of uh, only on the left vertebral artery she had a good life expectancy based on the tokuashi score which was 12 by 15 so now the discussion was uh, do we operate do we do radiotherapy or do we do combined now the challenge is was year one that if we have to do surgery in this kind of patient then obviously you have to think about doing an anterior reconstruction removing debulking the tumor followed by since it's going to be a big segment you will have to do some posterior fixation also following all the principles now the issue is that during her previous surgery she already had uh, surgery done to remove the thyroid uh, she had uh, radioiodine therapy done previous surgery had uh, issues with the recurrent laryngeal nerve and she was uh, you know had, she was having hoarseness of voice for more than 6 weeks at that time and uh, posteriorly right sided vertebral artery was not there we reconfirmed that by doing a dsa procedure where there was hardly any patency of the vertebral artery and uh, and also uh, the other challenge was that she hardly had any lateral masses on the posterior aspect so and the biggest part of this was the patient clinically just had some paresthesias in the right upper lip so with this we wanted to try to give her the best possible treatment by doing minimal that's what the tumor principles are all about so we decided we'll go with the radioiodine therapy unfortunately uh, we couldn't do the radioiodine therapy because she had an infant uh, with her and you know whenever you have an infant it becomes difficult because after radioiodine therapy you have certain leakage of the drug from your sweat and that could be harmful for the infant that's why uh, here we decided that we'll do something different here and what we did was sbrt now sbrt is essentially radiotherapy but conventional radiotherapy doesn't work here because uh, thyroid tumors are essentially radio resistant so sbrt is essentially a, a, a different a newer form of uh, radiation where uh, you uh, you project high dose of radiation in one single or uh, three four fractions uh, in such a way that your cord is protected so even the radio resistant tumor becomes radio uh, sensitive uh before that the radiation oncologist wanted us to do a clearance surgery and clear the tumor away from the cord uh so we did that and the patient was subjected to sbrt 
patient tolerated the procedure well and she was doing well for 6 months after which she started complaining of pain in the right upper limb and along with this even in the right lower limb she started having imbalance and her gradually started developing long track signs when we got her x rays done we realized that the one which was stable had now developed instability and the patient was falling off and there was kyphosis getting developed at the junction when we got her imaging done we realized that sbrt had worked very well uh, the tumor was well under control however because of the instability at this area what had happened is that the patient had started developing cord edema and uh, along with that the patient had myelopathy so here this is where the we are at uh she did well the tumor came under control but uh but as far as her functional uh, recovery is there she was deteriorating so here we had to decide how to go about with it do we operate or do we just let her be and palliate now again the principles don't change thyroid tumor has got a good life expectancy she had anyways managed to survive from 2014 to 20 so so uh, and even now the five year survival rate is more than 70% now again the challenges are still there that she had all the challenges of her redo anterior surgery and posteriorly one big problem was she doesn't have lateral masses or any bony hold on the right side on the left side she is surviving only on one pedicle now so finally we did this we uh, we opened her up posteriorly and we did a occipito thoracic fusion on the right side there is no bone in this area so it's just scar tissue and all we were able to pass uh, uh, screws in c2 and then the t1 and t2 on the left side we wanted to pass pedicle screws but with uh, with the with only one vertebral artery here what we did was we did a pre operative uh, closed ended stenting of the vertebral artery by this we essentially preempted an injury to the vertebral artery and stented it in such a way that even if there is some screw uh, you know skirting it or anything it will still remain patent and that's how we protected the vertebral artery and we did a occipito uh, cervical fusion after this we went ahead we did anteriorly we uh, spanned with a plate and in the areas where there was tumor we did a debulking of the tumor and reconstructed with mesh cages Uh, around the C5 and the C7 area which uh, involved the tumor the cage was uh, filled in with cement and it was spanned by the uh, new and new things are coming in in fact there are uh, there are few papers which have come up which gives us a kind of guideline of how to deal with uh, you know metastatic spinal tumors and in fact one of our bombay spine club uh, faculty dr gautam zavari has just come out with a review article on uh, the decision making in metastatic spine tumor and we kind of have followed a similar algorithm so this is uh, what we did for her uh, and this is a bit confused so she had a thyroidectomy and what was done posteriorly in the so uh, po- before they came to you so correct so posteriorly a partial cervical laminotomy was done uh, because uh, and because she had a c5 6 involvement of the tumor in the similar area where it was and it was pressing on the nerve roots so just a hemi laminotomy was done and a tumor debulking was done but i guess at that time because the tumor was engulfing the vertebral artery uh, there must have been a vertebral artery injury because it was documented in the operative notes so that was what was done in the first surgery as far as right. the spine is concerned right the first surgery that you did uh, your team did was uh, debulking of the surgery right so Correct. usually yes. in a in a, such a anterior vertebral body the debulking would be anterior so Correct. i, I Correct. believe you've taken a different approach so would you like to yes. elaborate on that what was your thought process so basically uh, what the radiation oncologists wanted was to just clear off the tumor partially from the cord that's the only thing that was uh, wanted and uh, this lady had got a short fused you know a uh, fixed kyphotic neck so access would have been dif- difficult with all the challenges of a revision anterior surgery uh, in a previously operated patient with radiation so here we thought that instead of going anteriorly if we just go posteriorly and from a lateral aspect just clear out the tumor from the cord because anyways the tumor had eaten away all through the lateral mass so all we okay. did is 
Yeah. So here, if you see that uh, this patient centrally did not have a lot of compression. Okay. Yeah. The patient's lateral mass was all destroyed, and the radiation oncologist just wanted us to clear this tumor off from the cord so that he can safely uh, do the SBRT process. So one one option was we go anteriorly approach via this and get a debulking done. But again, all the challenges of anterior surgery was there. And when we spoke to the patient regarding all the challenges, uh, they were also reluctant. And we had a option of doing it from the back, where we decided we'll approach from the back, go straight from here, debulk it here, uh, debulk the tumor on this aspect. So basically, paraspinal area above the lateral mass, all the tumor would have been removed, and then we would clear this off from the uh, cord. Uh, we we were not really very worried about the vertebral artery injury at this side because a uh, 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 embolization, basically a DSA was done, and uh, the uh, radio, uh, and they were able to embolize the tumor. And at that time, they said that the vertebral artery is not patent, so we were not really worried about that. So we took this approach and we just cleared this off. So not a lot of things. A simple surgery, just a cord clearance. So and that so was what, what we, was done before the SBRT. It's described as a spinal cord separation surgery or tumor separation surgery. That is exactly what we that did. That was the principle behind the first surgery that you did. Correct. Right, and the patient was uh, did not have instability, though there was a large uh, anterior defect. So yes, uh, I I can understand this is a difficult uh, because revision surgery is a difficult area to fit into a criteria. But if you had to give it a SIN score, which is a spinal instability neoplastic score, what would you give it as? Uh, so we had calculated it, and it was borderline. It was somewhere around eight-ish. Uh, so I don't have it offhand right now, but. Uh, Clearly, the patient radiologically. See, even if you see the X-ray in a flexion extension X-ray, the patient didn't have any instability. Yeah, uh, if you look at the CT scan and if you uh, look at the X-rays, obviously it looks like an unstable spine. But here, this posterior thick bone which was formed and all the fibrosis uh, because of multiple surgery and radiation kind of had made that area stable. uh yes we had discussed with the patient that uh, there is a very high chance that there is uh, you you might land up with an uh, unstable spine but the patient and all of us were prepared for a bigger surgery if that time comes as i told you because it was a metastatic spine uh, a re, a, you know a, a revision uh, uh, which was under control and then the tumor had uh, you know uh, there was a remetastasis at that same area uh we didn't want to do a lot for the patient you know because the morbidity of such surgeries are also there so we gave it a shot uh if sub- unfortunately the patient had developed instability after the uh, sbrt procedure but if it wouldn't have it would have been a great deal for the patient either or the patient was prepared so we thought we'll try to do minimal and give the best for the patient and hence we didn't do an anterior reconstruction at that time so what uh uh i would like to add here is that the tumor itself also acts as a stabilizing structure yes the tumor mass per se also is giving stability there and when we are uh, kind of uh, uh, debulking the tumor we have to make sure that some part of bone is intact or some segment of the bone or the lateral half of the other side of the bone is intact for some stability so we don't have the absolutely exact, exact ct cuts here it will be difficult to say if the if the left half of the body was intact uh so yeah no no so, so i, I completely me to the next question is yeah. uh, did you consider adding instrumentation at this junction during your debulking surgery so when we did the debulking surgery at that time we had instrumentation off hand what we did is we didn't expose the left side we just exposed the right side we did, we took a central midline incision and then we uh, directly started exposing on the right side we were ready with uh, lateral mass screws uh, and pedicle screws also in fact but when we actually opened up we realized that the tumor had completely eaten up the lateral mass the pedicle right from c4 c5 to c7 so there was there was no bone where we could pass the screw so we quietly just uh, debulked the tumor and got out of there and sent the patient for sbrt if at that time we would have found bone over there i would have definitely put some lateral mass screws or even pedicle screws because i was not worried, worried about the vertebral artery injury at that time but in intra we couldn't do that 
right yeah exactly because i myself put pedicle screws so uh, it could have been yes. really straight forward to put pedicle screws on the exactly. uh, tuber side because your uh, vertebra yeah. is already damaged anyways correct so, correct so uh, unfortunately she did end up developing uh, uh, instability and she did end up having the full uh, surgery what full job done yes probably happened yeah so lots of uh, learning points here uh first and foremost is that you have to respect the wish of the patient uh you have to discuss all the compli- possible complications especially in a tumor surgery revision tumor surgery that too uh and uh, uh what the patient understands and what the patient wishes has to be followed yeah so i was just trying to uh, see the whole case and maybe that one decision of going ahead with sbrt without surgery uh uh may have had different result very difficult to say at this point of time uh but, but at least now we case. know for sure that sbrt does work because here we have a clear evidence that uh, sbrt was really able to control the tumor when uh, thyroid it's known to be radio resistant but like you know tumors can be unpredictable tumors can be unpredictable. and all's well that ends well 